Well, I'm going to tell you, he's the fastest talker in New York. Let's give him a hand. How are you, everyone sitting here and around the world? It's a pleasure for me to be here on the stage the seventh year. This is the seventh anniversary. And I'll never forget, one night, about eight years ago, I was speaking in New York City, and Stephen said, can you talk to me after the lecture? And we sat, it must have been 10 degrees outside. And we sat in his car, and he said, I have this idea that we need to bring to the world something that's not being offered at this point. We need to bring truth, because the propaganda machine, the corporate interest, the food industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the oil industry, has everyone by the gazuns, and leading you down the rosy road to death and demise. And so the first year, right here in Long Island, we, Anna Marie and I and Stephen, single-handedly did a three-day conference. And I'm so proud of Stephen and the real truth about health. Let's give him a hand. So the year was 1967, not long ago. Well, I was living it up then. I had hair down to here and mutton chop sideburns. And I won't tell you what I was doing, but it was very light exercise. And they discovered that men also had a problem that women have. Women call it menopause. They named the male version andropause. Now the problem is that seemingly men and even doctors don't know this. So about three years ago, I started to ask a lot of my colleagues in healthcare globally how much they knew about this metapausal problem that we men endure. Practically nobody, less than 10% of people did. Because we used to spend, listen to this, the overwhelming vast majority of money up until 20 years ago on studying male disease. And that meant that women disease was being studied less than 20%. But what it also indicates is the arrogance of we males, that we literally care more about ourselves than we do our women, than we do our daughters, than we do our coworkers, our lovers, and our friends. And the fact is, we didn't want to admit, as you're going to see in this presentation, that we had a fallibility too. Only ladies, listen, we start this fallibility at 25. You start in your 40s. We're going to explain how this has changed the societies that we live in, the culture that we relish, and the very future of humanity depends upon what we're going to speak about today. So this is not a small subject about a disorder that none of you knew about. This is about how we're going to correct this so we don't have crazy men controlling everything. <laughs> and boy, do we have them. Over in Scotland, Dr. Lincoln, no relation, maybe he was, but in 19, or 2001, 2002, came up with a, another term. What do you think that term was at that point? It was called a syndrome, and this metapausal condition that we have was now called Grumpy Man Syndrome. Remember that old movie? I love that movie. Walter Matthau, jo Lemon, Grumpy Old Man. It was in the 1950s, very small children with very rich parents that didn't want short children. It was a stigma to have a short child. They started to pump human growth hormones into the children. And yes, they grew a bit, but at what cost? And we started to, in fact, recognize that that may create a whole new industry. Now, the wealthy often pump human growth hormones into your body, thinking that you're going to be sexier. Hasn't worked yet on many of you. <laughs> so in 
So here's the difficulty we have with we, we men, that we have this idea that we're infallible. Now, not many of you do this, but you should be doing it because the overwhelming evidence shows that if you keep muscles throughout life, both boy and girl, that literally they produce hormones and your youthfulness maintains much more than injecting human growth hormones. in. And if we have muscle, which we used to think incorrectly up till 40 years ago, at an older age, 60, 70, 80, 90, and beyond, it literally allows your brain to work better, your heart to work better, and most important, libido. Let's all say it together in New York. Libido. That's going to be the new song. Our culture has created this machivo man image. And when we're 19, boy, do we have that fertility. We walk along the road with our chest out. Remember Saturday Night Live? Boom, ba -dum, boom. <laughs> the chains, the whole bit. And we are at our sexual peak. Boys, men are at our sexual peak at 19. At that point, when I saw a tree that was bent, I'd stop the car. <laughs> they say we thought every seven seconds. I don't think I ever stopped thinking about it at that point. But at 25, what happens? We fall off a cliff. And here's the problem with that. Because your culture, your society, even your mothers taught you the machivoism, the chest out. You're in control. You are the head of the family. Remember that? You are the muscular ones, the strong ones. And that worked beautifully till 25. And at 25, no longer did we have the fuel to propel that virility that we had. Now, the women we fell in love with and made love with consistently, constantly, started to think, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Because women are programmed to think, what's wrong with them? Men never think that. When women can't have a baby, they check themselves. They don't check the man. And we now know over half the time it's a sperm count of the man. So we, in fact, never have a woman or very rarely have a woman say, well, gee, what's wrong with you? How come you're not quite as smiley and as touchy and as kissy and as lovey? as you were back when we were teenagers. Well, now you're starting to know. So yet we begin this menopause, and doctors don't know about it. Isn't that scary stuff? Most visibly, we age rapidly. People today look much older than they used to when I began my work 50 years ago as of three weeks ago. This is my 50th year, 1970. I began working a bit and studying a lot in this field. 1975, joined the team of Hippocrates. We were then in Boston. And moved the institute in 1987 down to Florida. We finally figured out that the north wasn't a nice place to be. It was cold, it was rainy, it was cloudy, and it was consistent. <laughs> you lived for the summer. Oh my god, June's going to come, and June was cold and cloudy and rainy. And then July and August burned you. And by September, boom, just like 25-year-old men, off the cliff. So we've got to start educating people. So the book I wrote is really for you, the public worldwide. But it's written in a way I have a whole lot of chunky science in the back. So the eggheads, as I call them, who really love to endow themselves with other people's research, they can read it and learn about this subject, which is powerfully important stuff. Because it's breaking up marriages. As I mentioned about three minutes ago, the leaders in the world are having this menopause, and I would actually render to believe most of them have it very deeply and very severely. And their chests are out, and they're barking and yelling and creating wars, not with their children, with you with you, and literally sabotaging humanity's future from this one. 
And women are watching this and thinking it's their fault. Must be me that did it. This was the very reason we wrote this book. Why does this matter? Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, because I'm sure every one of you would raise your hand that has a partner. But in most relationships, overwhelmingly, there's discord. How many of you recognize when you ask the man to join you, to help you, he's reluctant in doing that? Now, if he understood and if he was educated that maybe the fuel wasn't there to give them the same incentive, the same energy, the same vitality and virility that he had 10 years earlier or 5 years or 20 years earlier, that could be discussed. But he feels bad about himself, so he closes up like a what? Like a clam. So when men basically are asked, how are you doing? We have a stock answer. Good. <laughs> but your leg's cut off. Good. <laughs> your eyeball popped out. Good. <laughs> we don't talk to other men about it. Women, thank God, have an outlet called friends. And you talk. You talk. Men bark at one another. <laughs> Are you ready to admit that you have the desire but not the fuel to do it? So what I'm telling you is not a personal opinion. I'm giving you hardcore science. We are absolutely as virile as a man could possibly be at 19, at 25. The light shut off, and it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And every other ad on television worldwide now is erectile dysfunction. Do you have erectile dysfunction? And it used to be men were the ones that were cheating. Thank God women are out there cheating now because they have a husband with erectile dysfunction. <laughs> now in our seventh decade, we've been looking at this, and our psychotherapy team has found ways to help you understand this. So rather than say, you have a problem, there's ways to correct this. I'm exposing the concern now, but I'm going to tell you there's ways to correct this. And the reality is there's incredible data on this from the natural world. And the more we delved into this, we were pleasantly surprised that people are coming back to full virility and full functionality by, number one, changing their lifestyle, dietary habits, exercise habits, and more important, to expeditiously do that with certain sets of herbs, et cetera. So how many of you know a guy like this? Everything's bad. Everything's negative. This is a glass half what? Empty. It's always empty. Honey, do you want to go on a ride? Nah. Honey, do you want nah? <laughs> Remember, men are programmed to say no. No. Women are programmed to say yes. None of that's right, by the way. Both work and personal relationships depend upon us correcting this problem. This is a big problem. We would go as far to say that many of the social and international abnormalities today come from men who are literally, what we used to say about women, on the rag. But the men are on the rag. But we get away with it because it looks like we're bold and tough when we bark. If women bark, what happens? Oh, they're not ladylike. Maybe they need to bark at us sometimes. Maybe they need to say something's quite wrong. So we go around barking and getting acknowledgement from being good barkers. Now, I won't make you raise your hand, but many men sitting here, their minds start to wander. They don't focus like they used to focus. You say, well, you exercise, and they try, but it's painful. And this all has to do with one hormone. Anyone wants to render what that is? Testosterone. Testosterone. We are lacking testosterone. Now let's go back to the normal state of affairs. Hundreds of years ago, literally, healthy men and women 
would naturally reduce testosterone, not like a rock coming off a high building, but slowly reduce testosterone. And women would gain testosterone. So nature literally made it so that we men were really in leadership positions in our youth. And as we became mature, the women took the leadership positions in many ways. And I used to think that couldn't be true. And I used to look at old guys like me carrying their wives' purse. I said, I'll never do that. I'm doing it. <laughs> She's, she has a 200-pound purse. Any of you chiropractors, I'm going to need you after. <laughs> because nature and the universe, God says, give the woman a break. You've been barking at them for 30 years. Let up. Let them do a little barking at this point. Isn't that wonderful how it works? Now, when you look at the brain, there's overwhelming data on this now. When you see people who have confusion, foggy brain as we call it. How many of you think you have foggy brain here? It's hormones. Now, for men, it's testosterone, but for women, it's testosterone, too. Women have testosterone. You need it. By the way, if women are very sensual, it's because they have lots of testosterone. But you don't need it as much as I need it. A study that was done looking at men from 50 to 91 over a 10-year period, look at cognitive memory, and look what they found that their scores and memory scores were lower and lower and lower depending upon how low the testosterone was. Now, does this mean you should go out and immediately take testosterone? In very severe cases, there are bioidentical hormones that I may suggest. Our medical team offers that, but it has to be done specifically. But in most cases, I'm going to tell you to take what I take, red ginseng. Every single study done anywhere in the world consistently now forever shows red ginseng gets the testosterone to come. A good friend of mine, Dr. Yu, back in 1968, same year they discovered andropause, was working at the National Institute of Health. Dr. Yu is a brilliant surgeon, but he's also one of us. And he said, we were being taught in school and at the National Institute of Health, the most important institute of research on the planet Earth, by the way. That's one thing Americans should be proud of. There's no medical organization like National Institute of Health. But they were teaching him that men got prostate cancer from high testosterone levels. He said, I never bought it. I never believed it. I knew it was wrong. I said, you're right. Why did you know it was wrong? He said, well, every 20-year-old boy should have prostate cancer. Because by the time you're 50, you have maybe one-third of the testosterone you had at 20. By the time you're 70, you may have one-quarter of what you had at 20. Think about this. Now, in the last 10 years, guess what? The data shows us that. The most impressive study was done on 150,000 military people, either in active military or after, on testosterone. Now, this was no small study. When you take 150,000 people and look at them, you're not kidding around. And they found out there was no indication that even the use of testosterone created prostate cancers. So relax. But what it creates is a limp schnohutza. You didn't get that one in New York? Come on, catch up. In LA, they would have been laughing already. Must be on that Beyond Burger here or something. <laughs> so this whole problem is causing a whole lot of strife. Imagine many of you sitting here were completely in control of your mind, completely on top of the game. You may have created businesses or worked in business and been a superstar. And now when the hormones go down and the estrogens come up, you start to feminize. You literally start to feminize. And this sense of who am I? Now at 50, 60, 70 years old, you're asking the question that you should be asking at 
15, you're revisiting who am I again. And it's completely correctable. So look at this study that was done in 2015 on 521 men. And what did they find out there? Among those men, symptoms of depression. Depression is directly linked with hormones. In every single case we saw for women and men, it's hormonal as much as it's bacterial. And let me explain to you in a very simplified way that the number one cause, as my colleague and friend Dr. Cousins would tell you, as a psychiatrist, of depression and other more grievous forms of mental illness is bad bacteria counts in the intestinal tract. And why today do we have so many confused, depressed people? When I was a kid, that was an enigma. If somebody was confused and depressed, it was very, very rare. Today, every other person you know is on some form of antidepressant. Matter of fact, they give that stuff out like candy today. You have cancer, they give you antidepressants that destroy your very immune system. So you bomb the bacteria that creates not only 80% of your immune system, but 90% of the juice that prevents depression, called serotonin. You go to NYU or Harvard or Stanford, they're teaching the poor medical students the wrong thing. They're telling them serotonin comes out of the brain wrong. 90% comes out of the intestinal tract. Now, how do hormones enter into this? For women, it's estrogen. If women's estrogen is gyrating or they have too little, they tend to be depressed because now they're trying to see why they're thinking like men. Wouldn't that be perplexing? Wouldn't that be confusing? And when men's testosterone and estrogen goes up, historically in every case when we see testosterone go down, estrogens come up. Men are perplexed because they're thinking like a female. And they're not wired to do that. We're not wired to do that. And so that interrelates because in my book, Life Force, I speak about how we keep our youthfulness and how we reverse and prevent disease as we've been doing at Hippocrates for 64 years. It's through, by the way, hormones in plants. You say, oh, you mean there's hormones in plants? Of course. Bioidentical hormones are mostly made out of soy but every single raw plant in the world has hormones in it that maintain your youthfulness, your sexuality, your libido. Everything is programmed into plants. We humans and medical people, we don't have to invent this. It's invented. That's why we see the lily come back to people who come to Hippocrates. People who were dead in the water at 30 are now prolific sexually at 80 and 90. As are the Asian populations making love until the day they die well into their 90s quite a bit. But look at their lifestyle compared to your lifestyle. Your idea of vegan diets is no meat and no dairy and no chicken and no turkey, but shit. We're talking about healthy food. You say, well, I don't like that food. You don't like yourself? Don't eat the food. That's it. You think I like this food when I started? I loathe this food when I started eating. I used to gag when I looked at it. I used to yell at it. And once you take it into the body, the body says, ooh, well. It becomes like a Barry White song. Mmm. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> You're finally feeding me. Come on now. You say, how did you ever survive before that? It's like literally finding the plug that you get the energy from. As Anna spoke today about frequency in life, everyone's still struggling just to give up animal foods. We're taking you to the place that every creature on earth is, living food. Every creature on earth. There's not one species on this earth in their natural environment that do not eat a 100% raw food diet. You're the exception. And you want your libido to be good and your brain to be good and your heart to be good, you better get plugged in. You're not plugged in, don't be whining and complaining. Going to the latest holistic doctor with the latest fad. Oh, is he telling you about the ketogenic diet or the pale? Whatever book is popular, they tell you about. But it was a blood type diet. It was the Atkins diet. Because they don't know. They don't have a core of depth and experience. The clinical work we've done since 1956, 
where we plug dying people back into the energy source, and they come back to life. And those of us who are aging like all of you, we just don't age like all of you. Not because there's some magic going on, because now we're talking about real biology nobody's ready to talk about. Everyone's into the moderation. Just a little bit. Why they want a little bit is it doesn't offend you and you'll give them money. Do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We don't really want to make anyone stretch, because if you make them stretch, they won't come back and deposit more money. I want you not only to stretch, I want you to break. I want you to get into little pieces and reassemble yourself and realize that you are this brilliant creature, two-thirds bacteria. Hormones are the way you think. Every thought, every feeling, every emotion you've ever had in your life is hormonal. And to keep that energy going, that plug, is plants that are raw. Because once you cook the plant, the hormones are gone. Once you cook the plant, the vitamins are gone. Once you cook the plant, the proteins are disturbed. And most important, the medicine, the phytonutrients, kaput, finito, done. So we're all aging, doing moderate stuff. And congratulations, you've taken a step in the right direction. Now get a pair of running shoes and join a marathon, then a triathlon, and then win the triathlon. Don't do little bits and expect lots. Doesn't work. The laws of physics prevail, by the way. Little bits get little bits. <laughs> big bits get big bits. And big ass bits get everything. <laughs> so you don't want to be depressed? Get your hormones straight. Number one way to get your hormones straight is to repeat what I said five minutes ago. Get the bacteria in your intestinal tract straight. Get that serotonin, happy juice, coming up to your neurological system and your brain. Number two, eat plant-based foods that have the hormones in it. And most important, get muscle. You get muscle, the other thing I'm really sad to tell you, I'm sick of most of these little skinny vegans. They give us a badass name. I think the greatest film that came out recently was The Game Changer. Kicked ass. Give them a hand. <laughs> they showed all these sissy boys that are eating meat, or sissy boys. And let me tell you, the more meat you eat, the more the boys may be walking like this, because that meat is filled with female hormones. Have you ever seen the bodybuilders? They walk like this. Now you know why. <laughs> Real men eat plants. <laughs> sissy boys eat meat. Not only are you a sissy boy, you're a mentally disturbed sissy boy. You get under a cow and drink from its breast. <laughs> you take unborn chickens and you eat them. Oh, look at these eggs. It's a real food. Yeah, it's really good for dying and death. Salmonello and E. coli. It's not always pleasant to listen to truth, is it? So men are screwing up the world, and one of the reasons are because we're in control, and that's got to stop. We've got to start to share this. We're not going to make it if we don't share it. We've got to refuel men. They've got to find their energy source again. How many of you know that guy, by the way, that I just showed you there a second ago? Putting his hand through, you know, violence comes from that. Study after study now globally show us that the men who are murderers and rapists their hormones are completely whacked, completely whacked. They have never done a study when they look at the brain, that's important, and sometimes they have certain patterns of brain disturbance, but more importantly, 100% of these guys that are whack jobs literally have hormonal problems. And by the way, some of your concerns may be hormonal problems. A Japanese study relating to job stress showed the more stress you have, the less hormones you have. They looked at boys in this one, but women are the same. By the way, if women are, and women are more stressed than we are because we give them more to do. If it wasn't for women in my life, I would have failed years ago. I'm going to tell you now. I figured one thing out. You give a man a job, he may do it or may not. Give a woman a job, she's going to do it. And I'm not just sitting here blowing smoke up your schnutze. Women are the most powerful part of our species. Women create other human beings. My wife created children. And we think that they're weaker. 
How many of you boys ever saw a natural childbirth? You walk out of that, all at once I realize, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> They're not the weak ones. <laughs> that happened to me once, I would have died. Whoop! Had a heart attack. The head comes out. Woo! <laughs> power. And we suppress the power. We push the power down. So the more stressed you are, the less hormones you have. The less hormones you have, the more confused you are, and the less productive you are as a member of our society. So what's my moda? You just heard it. The less productive you are as a member of our society. A lot of you listen to us all around the world, sitting in this room here on this cold January day, and you admire us. I don't want you to admire me. I want you to equal me. I want you to have the fire and the passion that I have, the knowledge and the wisdom I have, and the perseverance I have, and most important, never give up. We need an army to do this, not leaders to do that. We are co-leaders, and women are as important as men. And why Anna Maria co-authored this, why Anna Maria co-authored this book is because you guys are getting the real bad end of the limp stick. <laughs> you don't deserve to be loved. You don't deserve to be cared for. Most of you men, you know what I'm talking about. You're good men. You love your partner. You would actually die for her. If you want to die for her, get strong before you die. Give her some pleasure before you do that. So the world is a mess, but we can just remedy it by getting centered again. We've got to center ourselves on what matters. Not look at make-believe power and barking and yelling, but true power, the power of energy and strength that you get from making decisions that are proactive. Proactive decisions, ones that will result in progress, not status quo or not in reduction of progress. How many of you look at this man and recognize him? I do 800 sit-ups a day. This is not a joke. Today, right here at the LA Fitness, four minutes away, I did 800 sit-ups in the sauna, which I do seven days a week. And I still have a little belly. Because as we age, our cortisol levels go up, and our testosterone, naturally, naturally. So how many of you guys are working out like animals, and you look like a cow? <laughs> Problem. So weight gain. This happens in both male and female, but with the testosterone thing, male much more. That's why you see more chubby men than you see chubby women. Because the sort of cortisol goes up. The other thing, this is really interesting. Women are better equipped to take care of stress than men. Anyone know why? Women 100 years ago had 10 and 15 children. That happened for millennia before that. You and I, we give us two children, we completely freak out. We become verklempt. <laughs> two. When we had my four children at home, I used to go out more often than I do now. <laughs> Women program 15 children running around 25 different directions. So God said they're either going to die or we have to wire them so they can take care of stress. Do you follow? So you don't get quite as chubby as us. You have to work hard. Why women get chubby mostly, they don't breastfeed their babies. How many of you know that? The number one cause of women getting chubby is they don't breastfeed their children. Think of the brilliance, the brilliance of nature. When you suckle, the baby suckles on the nipple, and you do that prerequisite two years of breastfeeding, it literally has hormones that eat the fat on the hips away. You don't do two years of breastfeeding, guess what? How many of you, and I won't make you raise your hand, have that chubby stuff on the side? You're doing 800 sit-ups a day. <laughs> it's still over there. 2014 journal, what did they say? Obesity is associated with low hormones. So what's ironic, the more overweight you are, and I used to be really overweight, 120 pounds more. 
the less testosterone you have, the less testosterone you have, the less muscle you have, the less muscle you have, the more testosterone goes down. Now, what's ironic about this whole thing is that why I said right at the onset, you need muscle. Men and women need muscle. Women, the estrogen comes out, testosterone stays tame. Men, testosterone go up and estrogen stays low is because 82% of muscle comes from fat. Let me repeat it to you. So everyone says aerobic, or, yeah, I'm a major fat. I do aerobic six days a week. But for weight reduction, weight lifting, weight lifting, weight lifting, weight lifting, now aerobic. And after doing all of that, you jump into a what? Sauna. Because by the way, sauna works as the Swedish showed us 20 years ago, 40% as much as aerobic exercise. So now you're detoxing the body as rapidly as you possibly can, both men and women, and you're lifting the weights, and you're doing the aerobic, but then you jump into the sauna and you take care of it at that point. There's a radical shift in metabolism. Your metabolism speeds up to a 20-year-old kid when you're doing that. So again, you're a little chubby, more problems with low testosterone for both male and female. Because what did I say? Naturally, hundreds of years ago, women would have more testosterone and less estrogen as we went. So we have to start to re-image who we really are. We've got to really start, this is a social discussion we're having now, not only a health discussion, but to me, it's inseparable. Matter of fact, there's no difference to me between any of the sciences. Physics is as important as chemistry, as biology, as is everything we're discussing today. And if we don't quit segmenting and compartmentalizing, and we start sitting at a table all the teachers and the leaders and the scientists and discussing with one another, you're going to be still be in trouble. You go to people who have part of the story. We need the whole story. I got frustrated 40 years ago. I started to study biology and it never took me to where I wanted to. And then chemistry, never, then physics, and then I found quantum physics. And a new emerging field called quantum biology was coming up. And natural history tied it all together for me. Because that's where I found out, by the way, every creature, by the way, eats raw food in nature. Never taught me that in biology or nutrition. I have a doctorate degree in nutrition. Never once did they tell me that. They told me, how much of what to sell to who? <laughs> sell them this, sell them this, sell them this. The problem is, I want to sell you what you don't want to buy, you. That's the biggest hard sell in the world. If you would just buy you, you'd be OK. But you don't want to buy you because you don't trust you, you don't believe you, and you know you're full of baloney. I get that because I was right there with you. It took me so long to trust myself because I knew I was great at squirming out of everything right. How about you? Aren't you really good squirmers? You know what you should do. Instinctually, you know what to do. And then you talk to yourself, well, it's a little, I tried it before, it didn't really work, I'm not really sure. And then you you get on the internet, the most evil thing that ever happened to confuse people. <laughs> Dr. Schmo says this, Dr. Schmuck says this, Schmo and Schmuck says this, and the University of Shinohuka says this. And before you know it, you're all riled up and you do nothing. Let's go out and have some organic Twinkies. <laughs> we don't know why we're obese. Well, I know why, because I happen to read truth. 1970, any of you that are a little older here remember, the mortal sin that they would excommunicate you from a family is if you ate between meals. If my mother caught me eating between meals, she'd cut my hand off. How many of you remember that? You remember the word? What are you, eating between meals? Okay. 1970, 2020, we double the meals. The average European and North American, we consume six meals a day. But we better put more money into obesity research. No. Nope. Get mommy back again. <laughs> she would have kicked your ass. You were getting fat. <laughs> I was overweight. My parents didn't know what to do with me because they kept saying, it's OK. You're a man. You're a boy. So it makes you strong to be overweight. 
No, it made me more feminine to be overweight because my testosterone was going down at 20. Follow me? Made me less intelligent, less productive. That's what happened. Decline in mass, an average man's lean mass decreases by approximately 10% every decade. On a living food diet, this is the highest protein diet in the world. I don't know if you know that. There's nothing that even resembles an animal, and this is the highest protein diet in the world. So I've had the great fortune of not only helping the sickest people in the world bring about their own recovery, but working with the top athletes. The top athletes have come to us for years. As you see, we even have Arnie Schwarzenegger now as a vegan. Why? Because men finally become men once they get rid of the nonsense. And they wake up. We can stop that. One of my good friends, I used to argue with this guy all of the time in Boston. He was the president of Tufts University. He was a doctor of nutrition also. And whenever they wanted to have hot information on the news, they'd pit me against him. back, And we'd fight back and forth. But I loved the man and I respected him because he always stood by what he said. He may not have to agree with me. Now in America, you all want everyone to agree with you. Quit being wussies. Respect other people's opinion. Respect other people. Respect yourself so you can do that. And Dr. Meyer said, you know, I better do a study to show that old people can get muscle. So he actually took centurions, the age, medium age, listen to this, 102. He got 17 people over 100, medium age, 102. And he pitted them against our then Olympic athletes, 16, 17-year-old kids. Guess what? We develop muscle at 100 the same exact way we do at 16, 17, 18, maintaining it. Now, here's the bummer. 19-year-old peacocks can walk around with their chest out like this with muscles they pumped a week ago. You, you're going to be pumping every other day. Remember when your bicycle tire went down? You're going to be doing it every other day, <laughs> at least three days a week. This look familiar? And can you imagine, this poor doctor may be the guy at the ER. And when we look at some of the professions that have the lowest hormones, it's those professions. Because not only are they not sleeping, another great way to kill hormones, they are eating garbage out of machines. They're not eating food. They're eating stuff, substances out of machines. They're in the most stressful job on the planet. The two most stressful jobs in the world, anyone know? The frontline Marines, Green Beret, and doctors in the emergency room. You ever see how they age? By the way, just two days ago, another study came out and showed that when you get under a lot of stress, it kills a particular form of enzyme that makes your hair go gray. Brand new study, just came out 48 hours ago. And the scariest thing I saw was just a kid I was six years old, and one of my good friends, one of my best friends, David, his father was out playing baseball with him, 32-year-old guy, went back to throw the ball, had a coronary and died. And David was so shocked. He was a, a, a daddy daddy. He was a real good daddy. He was just out with us playing like he was one of the kids all the time. And we were all shocked. But we, I didn't register what death was at that point. I thought he'd come back sometime. I was six years old. And David, this little blonde boy, his hair turned completely gray in 10 days. We were so shocked because the only thing we could relate to at that tender young age, he looks like our grandparents and the monster movies and all of that. That's what's happening to you. We're in a big monster movie, all of us. Turn on the news today, you get stressed. You're the most relaxed person in the world. Just turn on the news for a minute. Drive on the highway. Things you don't even take into the mind and think it's stress. Driving on the highway. Yeah. I drive 80, 90 miles an hour all the time. I don't think it's stressful. You don't think it is? My poor wife does. <laughs> Fatigue comes from people having low hormones, no nutrition, and lack of sleep. By the way, doctors die in their 50s commonly. Green Beret, Navy SEALs die in their 50s commonly. And as my good friend Dr. Cooper, the Kenneth Cooper Center down in Texas showed us a long time ago, in part it's malnutrition. And how he did that study, he looked at gold medalists from the Olympics. That 
If you'd asked me the day before I read this study, I would have said, other than people on the Hippocrates lifestyle, the strongest women and men in the world are gold medalists from the Olympics. He showed that they were all dying in their 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Why? Because they were doing the same amount of exercise they did in their 20s, but without what? Nutrition. So that was before we understood the term oxidative stress and free radical damage. My friend, Dr. Yu, who I mentioned 22 minutes ago, he was really interesting. We were having a conversation 30 years ago. He said to me, when I look at the disease that a person has and the depth of the disease, when I open them up as a surgeon, I can tell you how rippled and darkened their skin is. Those of us that are older, if you look at your hand, you have black spots on it. That's free radical damage. But when you have, for instance, a liver problem, fatty liver problem, or you had a coronary, or close to having a coronary, or you have cancer of some type, you open it up, and the entire organ is darkened colors. It's rotting. The skin is actually rotting. And when you start to look at all of this, it can all be prevented by the nutrients that nature and the universe put into the food called phytochemicals. Phytochemicals. So this is what a normal prostate looks like and an abnormal prostate. And the story today is if a man lives long enough, he's going to end up with a prostate problem and most likely cancer. Let me show you how different that is from when I began my work a half a century ago. I hardly saw men with prostate problems. Old men didn't get up five times in the middle of the night to urinate. But why? Now we're going to give you the big story. Because everything that man has created with heavy metals, which are on every bit of pesticide, fungicide, and herbicide in the world, and every chemical, we make 2,000 brand new chemicals every single year. Let me repeat it. All over the world, in laboratories, we create brand new chemicals that didn't exist last year, and we release them into the environment, and they mix with hundreds of thousands of other chemicals that become millions or possibly billions of chemicals. We don't even know what they are. And here's the bummer. They all look like estrogen. So as brilliant as a human body and anatomy it is, and I'm going to tell you, if you study anatomy and physiology, you start believing in God. I'm telling you the truth, whatever that looks like to you. You finally realize that there's extraordinary connectivity among all living things. But we understand now that these chemicals make estrogens. And when you make estrogens, immediately young boys stop having testosterone. Young women, when you get lots of estrogen, start having high amounts of testosterone. And now men become women, and women become men. And I won't make a commentary, but I have a lot of close women friends, and they said, when they're single, it's really hard to meet a man now. And I'm reading through it, what they're saying. Men, men are gone. Now, not to say, you know, John Wayne was a great example of a man. He probably had menopause, no question. <laughs> he really had menopause. He was dragging his leg. <laughs> Clint Eastwood, menopause. You see him now? Looks like a little wimp. <laughs> but the reality is, our prostate started to become a problem when we started to pour deadly chemicals and heavy metals into your body. And Maria mentioned it earlier today, you're putting perfumes and cologne on that is estrogenic. The clothes you wear, polyester, nylon, et cetera, are estrogenic. The seats you're sitting in are estrogenic. The rug that's in here is estrogenic. Think about that. Air pollution, water pollution. So besides not living correctly, not sleeping, being under stress, all the things I've just mentioned, now we compound this dramatically by you being the first generations in the history of humanity that are exposed to deadly heavy metals and chemicals. If I do tests, which I've done on thousands of people for heavy metals, none of us have no heavy metals. I have heavy metals in my body, just smaller amounts than I did when I first tested myself. When I first tested myself, I was actually going to turn myself into a bank because I was worth a lot. So the number one sign that man is in full menopause, andropause, is this. So those guys that are here, and I won't make you raise your hand again, that are peeing like an a elephant, you're in full blast andropause, menopause. 
This looks familiar? So I didn't realize when I became a nutritional guy, I was going to be a marriage counselor too. But over the years, Anne and I became marriage counselors. We're very blessed because we're totally in love and committed to one another. She's a mother of my children, my lover, my wife, my coworker, everything. But we don't see that in many places. By the way, the statistics show it. Only 10% of partnerships are happy ones. 50% of you divorce, and the rest just endure one another. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. So several years ago, we had a, a couple come to us. They've been married for 35 years. Think of that. It's a long time, 35 years. So they were about ready to get a divorce, and we knew them. We said, well, you know, you used to come here and kiss one another. You were like Valentino and his, his wife. You know, you're just beautiful people. What's going on? Well, what did she say? He doesn't love me anymore. She thought he was running around with girls. He was just afraid to say he wasn't able anymore. I'm not able anymore. Rather than tell his best friend, his wife of 35 years, by the way, I'm having a problem, he just ignored her. Sounds a little familiar, ladies, and won't make you. And finally, we talked to him and said, you know, this is your problem. But ended up, both of them had a problem. When we tested their hormones, both of them were in la-la land with hormones. And now their 50th anniversary happened. But what happened if we didn't intervene? What happened if I didn't know that? They would have divorced. They have something like, they made me upset. I have eight grandchildren, they have 12. I'm jealous. How many of you have grandchildren? You know what I mean? Best things in the world. So this is not about only world leaders getting us into messes and wars because of their insecurity about their malehood, but this is about marriages breaking up and families breaking up. And we're not waiting till 50, 60, 70 anymore because 20-year-old kids have andropause, because they've been doing nothing but eating McDonald's. They've been doing nothing but putting colognes on. They've been doing nothing but living in polluted areas of the world. Think about that. Look at this. This is what we call food. It's almost an embarrassment to call these things food. And that's what we've been eating. So now today, you see, Meat substitutes. How about getting to the point you don't want to eat the muscle of an animal? You don't need a meat substitute. How about getting to the point where you don't want to suck from the breast of a cow? How about getting to the point where you're woman and man enough to say no to total insanity? Now, we're going to give you the biggest food problems. Number one is sugar. By the way, we're going to give you for free my sugar book. One of the most important books I wrote and certainly, if somebody said, what's the number one thing people should give up that's bad at sugar? We've done work on that. Now, finally, the consensus with the legitimate scientific community, there's not too many of them, but legitimate. You're going to hear a lot of people tell you how great fruit is on this stage, et cetera. That's all now passe stuff, passe. But sugar is male hormone's best friends because it gets rid of it. it, makes you estrogenic. And women, it makes what? Masculine. And what doesn't have sugar in it? I'll bring you to the best health store here locally and show you that most of the products have sugar in it, or they break into sugar. You may say, I don't eat any sugar. I don't eat any of those products. You eat potatoes. You eat bread. You eat pasta. 20, 30 minutes, you have sugar in you. That's just people who are trying to hide they have a sugar problem. Do you follow? And the number one addiction in the world is sugar, not heroin, not alcohol not cocaine, sugar. You say, oh, Brian, you're extreme. You're extreme if you don't know that. Cocaine and heroin are far less addictive than sugar. And how many of you have ever tried to give up all sugars here? The hardest thing I ever did. Gave up meat, boom, loved meat, gave it up. Gave up dairy, boom. Sugar, 35 years. Just rename my sugar. This isn't sugar, this is a half a pound of honey. <laughs> You raw yeast, oh, it's agave yeast here. That's worse. <laughs> worse. The hardest thing in the world. 30 times more addictive than cocaine. I never took cocaine. Thank God I didn't because I would have gotten fat with that too, I'm sure. But the reality, quite simple, is that's pretty bad. 
People who took cocaine said to me, look at one time we wanted to co constantly take it. It made us heroic, made us feel like we were super people. What do you think sugar does to you? One of the most interesting articles I ever read in the New York Sunday magazine section was exposing the sugar cartel. Read it. Pull it up. Must be online. These people kill. How many of you know, how many of you black people even know that slavery came from the sugar industry? Half the black friends of mine, they didn't know that. When a handful of arrogant white aristocracy in Europe wanted the substance called sugar, which was hardly eaten, by the way, it was so revered and so expensive, it was exclusive, that they'd eat a kilo a year, two and a half pounds a year, 2.2 pounds a year. They said, well, Europeans can't do this. It's too hard to work. Who are the people that can do it? So they went over and took these innocent Africans. Innocent people. They were so beautiful. Have you ever been to Africa? Most genuinely human people I've ever met. They talk like this, hello. And they mean it. <laughs> they embrace you, hello. So the most beautiful, that's your ancestors. And they said, oh, just get in our boats here. Oh, wow, we're going to take a boat ride. And they brought them through the Caribbean. They brought them to North Carolina and South Carolina. And they enslaved them so that a handful of white folks could take a kilo of sugar a year. Now, one of the things that governments have known ever since the beginning of organized society, which is the beginning of the end of society, the end of culture, is that you divide and you conquer. And why they pour into certain communities cocaine and heroin is to divide and conquer. And they got all of us to take the substance now called sugar. You are a slave to sugar. So your governments intentionally started to subsidize the sugar industry. And by the way, the average person consumes 120 to 160 pounds of sugar a year. The slave industry came out of it. You're now enslaved. It's karmic, I'm going to tell you right now. And I'm not going to ask you, but you know you have a problem with sugar. And if you could just rename in your sugar, you have a bigger problem. That's like an alcoholic says, I only drink one cup of wine a day, but try to take it away from me. What do we go to next? All of the notions, foods, the average person consumes today are the main culprits in creating menopause. Reproductive biology and endocrinology did blood testing for 545 men. The higher sugar, the lower testosterone. So you women, by the way, don't think you're going to make your husband happy by giving him some sugar. He's not going to make you happy you keep giving him sugar. <laughs> Matter of fact, you say, honey, we're going to go on a sugar-free lifestyle. <laughs> How long? Forever. <laughs> Another book that you may want to read uh, is The Seven Ways to Lifelong Sexual Vitality that we wrote because you should be making love to 120. You should be having fun. You should be loving each other. You should be totally romantic throughout your life. It's not like, I'm getting old, I don't want to kiss you. Shit, you should kiss more when you're getting old. How about what we do to our homes and our offices? Well, I don't like bugs. You like life? <laughs> You're worried about Florida, we have these palmetto bugs. Ever see a palmetto bug? Really ancient bug. Oh, they're big. I was laying, I first moved to Florida like 1970. I was laying down really tired, coming back from the university. I was working all night and going to the university in the day. I was seeing this Kalmata bug for the first time, and he flew and hit me right here. I almost died. <laughs> but I'd rather see the palmetto bug than to get deadly chemicals pumped into my home. As Anna Maria pointed out today, all environmental protection agencies globally tell us one thing. Inside of the average home in the middle of a dirty city, it's seven times more polluted than the dirty city. Think about that. Some of you have been lulled into believing the propaganda that New York City, oh, we're a clean city. <laughs> I'm from here. <laughs> clean city. I'll check your blood. I used to have an office in New York City. 
My partner had been only an alternative doctor 52 years. I never found one clean body in New York City. LA is a little worse, by the way. At least you're beating them. How about what we're doing with this? Synthetic chemicals, you're spraying them on yourself in the environment all over the place. And I won't ask you how many of you, but you're spraying it on your face, your hair. Remember the hairspray? Remember Vaseline? I, mean, I don't know what that stuff had in it. But I can tell you, it couldn't have been good for you, that's for sure. Many of the classic symptoms of andropause are heightened when you take these deadly chemicals. And by the way, women masculate when you take these deadly chemicals. So all at once, if your partner is yelling more at you, get her off the chemicals and the sugar, off the meat. How about these studies? You say, well, when I go in the sun, I want to put on sunscreen. Two landmark studies on this one. In the sunscreen, this deadly chemical, first University of California, it was actually changing the gender on fish along the entire Southern California coast. Changing the gender. It doesn't ch change it on fish, but not you. Of course it's going to change it on you. You're not even as smart as a fish. <laughs> And then in Switzerland, the same study in 2012, same thing, sunscreen chem. I was in California 20 years ago speaking, and here's the couple, the leading authorities in the world on sunscreen. And I, they said, you know a lot? Oh, yeah, I know a lot. I didn't know anything. When they gave me their book, I knew 1% of what they wrote. I was like stunned. I thought I really knew about it. 99% I learned from that. This is deadly stuff. If you listen closely this morning, Anna Maria said, the Florida Keys have now outlawed sunscreen. And the right-wing nutcases that run Florida now are saying you can't do that. But you can do that, because it's killing the reefs. And the reefs die, you die. How about pesticides? How many of you think you don't get pesticides just because you eat organic food? I eat 100% organic food. I breathe pesticides. I take showers. Did you see the study that came out yesterday as I flew in here to MacArthur Airport? A study came out that you have all of the water tested in this area has a deadly brain and body and cell altering chemical in 30% of the water, and all of the water had at least 30% of this in it. Just yesterday it came out. You have benzene in your water. We have one of the leading authorities in this country on water purification. He's from here. He's from Long Island. His family's here. He cried in my office, a growing man my age, and said, I don't know how we're going to get that out of the water. Most deadly cancer-causing chemical ever discovered by man. It's in every drop of your water on Long Island. And where did it come from? This used to be the dump sites for factories from New York. There was nobody living here. My family used to have a house in the Hamptons. They shouldn't have sold it. <laughs> It was a cottage. They'd come and hang out in the Hamptons in the sun. It was potato farms. What do you think the potato farms did? We Irish. How many of you are Irish here? Damn potatoes. <laughs> if you fail to eat organic fruit and vegetable, you are exposing yourself to unhealthy levels of pesticides residues. But even those of us at 100%, we live on a polluted planet, a septic planet, a cesspool planet. Toxicology the University of London tested. And what do they find? Once again, the higher the pesticides, the lower the hormones for both boy and girl. The higher the pesticides, the lower the hormones. Why? Because it all looks like estrogen to your body. How about fast food? Tomorrow I'm going to be doing a presentation where I, I show a study that just came out. 45,000 people who ate fast food. The mortality rate dropped by 15 years. So people who only ate fast food on and off. We're not talking about most Americans, most Europeans eating fast food every day, every meal, et cetera. You want to live 15 years less, eat highly processed fast foods. And forget only the fast food not being food and being genetically modified, but how about the plastic they wrap it in? I won't ask you, but how many of you ever ate at those damn gasoline stations? When I was a kid, somebody would say, you're nuts. I'm pumping gasoline. Why would I eat food? 
Now, many of you say, oh, it's convenient. Why don't you dip a little oil and gasoline into the sandwich you're having? It's like nuts. Everything is about convenience, and it's inconvenient to be convenient because you end up suffering. And you end up polluting the planet Earth. You end up killing yourself. And then you're shocked. I've lived a good life. I don't know why I'm sick. I'm telling you why you're sick. So the entire world is in trouble. Whether you eat fast food or choose Burger King, McDonald's, or Taco Bell, or it's highly processed prepackaged food. Statistics compiled actually show from 2018 that men were more likely to eat fast food than women. Why? Because women have an instinct still. You're corrupted, but not quite as corrupted as us. Women also make, listen to this one, the latest study came out two months ago. Women make 98% of the food and health choices in the family. Listen to that. 98%. Thank God more men are coming to Hippocrates. They're getting a little bit more open. But the reality is it's still 7 out of 10 that come to us are women. You have the instinct for that one. So this is why we're in trouble. Again, why I like the fact we're finally pinning men for that machivo idea. Meat means muscle, and saying, no, meat means sissy, is because men are still in control of the economy. We make 98% of the choices as women, but we still control the economy of food, sadly. But put it over in women. All at once, you'll be eating sprouts all day long. <laughs> you may not like it the first month, but I'll tell you, by the third month, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. What to embrace? That's a simple thing. Embrace yourself first. Embrace the true you, the unadulterated you, the authentic you, the honest you. That's who you have to embrace first. But fresh foods, let's not make it organic. Fresh and organic and no GMO. Fresh. You think taking a head of lettuce that was grown six weeks ago in California, is that healthy for you? Just healthier than fried lettuce. <laughs> That's it. But it's still. You need stuff growing. You know, in this conference, you have people right outside this door that have the most powerful food on the planet Earth. And you say, oh, I bet a lot of you go out and spend $100, $200 to eat a meal at a crap restaurant. You can't afford $50 a week to feed you and your family, your loved ones, with this food that puts muscle and brain and power and adjusts your hormones into you? Shame on you for being so disrespectful for your life. Quality water. We said it loud and clear today. We'll repeat it. Three of us today said it. Gabriel, Anna Marie, and I. If you're not drinking distilled water, you're polluting your body. Distilled water is the only water that takes out pharmaceutical drugs and plastics, period. Now, you can pay seven, eight thousand, nine thousand dollars for a unit that will do the same, but I'm telling you the cheapest way to do it. Distilled water will take out the most deadly thing, not the chloride. It will take that out easy. That's not the deadly thing, not the fluoride. These are not so deadly as the plastics and pharmaceutical drugs. Read my book, Killer Fish. You'll read, I interviewed three of the leading oceanographic scientists in the world. They said every drop of water on Earth has plastics and pharmaceuticals. Herbal support. What did I say for boys with testosterone? Red ginseng. Now, if we do that long enough, and if you don't get back to your normal, and we do a test on you, maybe temporarily we'll get a competent physician to give you bioidentical hormones that are plants, but eight out of 10 of you never need that. You can do it on red ginseng, cleaning up your diet, cleaning up your water. Other than water, there's nothing that puts more deadly chemicals in your body than water. Oh, showers do about the same, by the way. As MIT showed us, a 15-minute shower you, through your skin, you get a liter and a half of water. That's a quart and a quarter. So 15-minute shower. I can't imagine what a bath does. Because you're submersing yourself in the water. Then. So just standing under the water gives me a liter and a half, about a quart and a quarter. Can you imagine what 
laying in it for 30 minutes does. Women, by the way, go to cola. Your estrogen levels will go up with go to cola. Sunlight. You say sunlight, vitamin D. Only one of the thousands of things that happen with sunlight. We are just scratching the virtual surface of what the sun does. Summer, sun is the number one way to boost and strengthen your immune system, period. That's why every civilized society until recently used to put people out in the sun. If you went to a sanitarium 50 years ago in Europe, they would make you sit in the sun in the middle of winter even. Nothing boosts the immune system. Even food comes in second to the sun. Your mood, I didn't realize till I moved out of the Northeast, because I'm a happy guy, that I had seasonal depression. I moved out of here because, again, as I said early on, in June when it was supposed to be nice, it wasn't. Then the end of August, everyone got excited because the nippiness. They say, oh, it's getting nippy. I got bummed out because I knew the clouds would roll in. And I finally realized it wasn't the cold, it was the lack of. Because if I go to Colorado where it's 50 below zero, I'm not that unhappy because it's what? So sunlight is powerful for your emotions your virility, your sexuality, your youthfulness, and most important, it gets sexy that way. <laughs> weightlifting. It's not good enough to eat plant-based diets. You've got to lift weight. You've got to get muscle. You've got to look like you're substantial. When you have muscle, you speak with authority, live with authority, and act with authority. When you feel weak, you feel weak, act weak, and look weak. That simple. Get your acts together. Wimpy vegans give us a bad name. Overweight vegans, you blender vegans. Well, I put 32 mangoes in, and a half a cup of coconut, oh, it's organic, and the agave syrup. I don't know why I weigh 500 pounds. I'm telling you now, brother, <laughs> why you weigh 500 pounds. Aerobic exercise. Do you realize what that does to you? It increases oxygen. There has never been a legitimate study on cancers or heart disease or mental illness that doesn't show if we increase oxygen, you improve those conditions, period. There's never been one study that didn't say that. But doctors don't tell you to do that because they can't charge you to do aerobic exercise. Testosterone replacement therapy. What did I just say the number one was? Red ginseng. So how many of you know that you have wonderful, right here on the island, but even more so in New York, go down to where the Chinese doctors are. That's where you're going to get for about a third of the price and people who really know what they're doing. So whenever you're in the city or any major city in the world, uh, you go into those and you ask for the finest forms of Chinese ginseng. And by the way, Korean seems to be the one that does the best the maximum amount. So this is an overview of Hippocrates. What we've been doing is, this year we've just been reassembling our medical team at Hippocrates to more advanced. So we're moving now slowly into the genetics of it. Genetics is valid enough. It's, we're probably in kindergarten. Reverse nutritional right. deficiencies so and promote inner years, healing. We're find a lot. The program starting starts with a complete states. health evaluation, Tom, inclusive of, of blood draws nurses, and energy so feedback way, analysis to identify cancer. and highlight your specific health challenges and recommend the optimal That's supplement and lifestyle plan for you. Medical supervision is provided throughout your stay to ensure you are fully supported. Upon arrival, you'll be guided on a tour of the property along with the other guests that arrived that day. You will enjoy our fresh pressed green juices made daily and learn about the incredible benefits of our world renowned wheatgrass and protein rich algae. Wheatgrass and algae are two of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet, both containing more nutrients per calorie than any other food. You will indulge in our amazing organic raw vegan cuisine. This mineral rich diet will help accelerate your healing. Revitalize your cells with our latest energy and healing technologies that support the nervous system and promote inner healing. H-Wave, Nucom, Ondamed, MRS CyberScan, Theragem, Viofor, Turbosonic, and so much more. 
You will also experience psychotherapy and group sessions to share your story and find the support you need. Colonics will help cleanse your colon and optimize your digestive system. Yoga and Qigong for spiritual and physical balance. And spoil yourself in our organic salon and spa. Attend our cutting edge health lectures. Relax in our sea salt mineral pool. Detoxify your heavy metals in our infrared or steam saunas. Participate in our unique exercise classes, such as rebounding, aqua fitness, Swiss balls, Latin dance, and so much more. Connect with others on your wellness journey and build friendships that last a lifetime. All of this and more, located on 55 beautiful acres in West Palm Beach, Florida. Are you ready for your life transformation? So the last message I have for you today is that every single person here can bring their life back to normal again. There is not an exception to that. I've had the privilege to work with 275,000 people in my 50 years of work. And more than half of those people were catastrophically ill. And even these people can bring themselves back to life. You can reverse the aging process, reverse hormonal problems, reverse cancers, diabetes, heart disease, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease. All of this can go away, plus more. But you've got to take yourself serious. You can no longer sit as students and listen to us and say, that's interesting. You've got to make your life interesting. You've got to fight for your life. You've got to do every single thing in your power, even though your mind is saying you don't want to do it. Your heart is wanting to do it. Your heart's just waiting for you to get that beautiful youthfulness that you had, and optimism as a child. When you were young, there was nothing you wouldn't do or wouldn't try. Today, you're calculating, you're intellectualizing, and you're literally saying, until everyone says to me, I won't have any discomfort, I'm not willing to change. I'm here to tell you, you better have some discomfort. You've been really comfortable and you're dying in the process of being comfortable. Humanity is dying. And you think you're safe at this point. None of you are safe. If you're not totally authentic to yourself, if you don't have a level of integrity that you're even surprised about, you're part of the problem. And I mean this, you're part of the problem. This is not about doing something that's going to just improve one thing. It's about transforming you back to normality again. That's what we're telling you. It's time to do that, man. Not sit on the sidelines and whine about your circumstance and situation. What I know is when you stop whining and you start doing, life transforms. God bless all of you and take care of yourself.